All right, and so these are all the prints that we printed with the P1P. If one thing I'm impressed about this thing is how well everything comes out. So we did use a few different materials, pretty much the same high speed, so everything was printed very quickly and most impressively with high quality. I did print out a few files that were on the SD card. I wasn't too sure what they were as I couldn't preview them, but I printed quite a few and that's all in white PLA that came with the printer. So let's go ahead and start with this kit here, which is bones of a dinosaur and it all prints flat and then you kind of build it. So I did have to use a little bit of super glue to kind of hold it together, but yeah, that was a fun print. And yeah, pretty cool little desktop model here that showcases what you can do with a 3D printer. And they do have this file included, which is pretty fun to print as your first prints. Yeah, everything went down really smooth. It's kind of hard to tell on white, but you guys can see it looks quite finished and a beautiful print. Another print that was on the SD card is this little puzzle and it was also in pieces, but I had to glue them because I was not able to put it all together without it all falling apart. So I did leave a couple here loose. Let's see. There we go. So it comes apart. So I kind of glued the two pieces together and then put it into the one piece that it's supposed to be, but you should be able to put it all together in one piece, but it's quite complicated. It might take a while. I had to look it up to see how it goes together. So yeah, this is like a little puzzle piece here and that was fun to print also. So this kit here actually comes with the printer. It says printed phone holder. It's actually to these three holders that hold your phone. And you got small, medium, and large. And the stickers in here in the bag are actually feet for the stand. And the stands are pretty cool. They just print like this and then you kind of pop them open. It should break loose quite easy and it hinges. And then there's a flap here in the front. Let's see, there we go. And now you can set your phone in here and be like a little phone holder. And there's three sizes as you guys can see. So yeah, pretty cool, useful little thing that they actually include for you to get started with. Another kit we got is for a scraper. And this was also on the SD card, which prints out these three pieces. And this looks like the holder for it. And then we have the scraper itself with this piece here that looks like a couple screws go through and hold it down, which is in here. So let's see if we can put it together real quick. So it is an actual scraper that's very sharp. And it's literally going to sit in here. And these little nubs have to line up. And then this will go on top like this and then two screws that are included will go through. The only thing you really need to keep in mind here is you got to be really careful as this blade here is pretty sharp not to cut yourself. And actually I think I'm putting this thing on the wrong way. I think the bolts go through the top here and then this piece goes on the bottom. I believe that's correct. But in any case something like this and your finger goes here and you can scrape like this so you can get down really low. So yeah. Pretty cool little scraper that you can print yourself and build it and they include all of the parts that you need. And actually there is a couple little magnets looks like inside and one of them appears to go here in the handle, fits perfectly. And the other one is on the holder here and I'm not sure exactly how they interact but scraper does go into the holder and holds nice. But we got a magnet here and a magnet here so I'm guessing so you can magnetize this as you're working to the frame so it kind of holds itself. So that's kind of cool. Same thing for this thing. You can magnetize it. I guess something more flat. Yeah, pretty cool little kit. And yeah, pretty impressive that it comes with the printer. So we got a couple more that we printed out of the SD card, which is the storage organizing little box. Very nice. I love the design of it. Very useful to keep stuff in there like tools and pens and whatnot else. Even this glue that came with it, which we didn't have to use, believe it or not, which is cool. So yeah, this little organizer here is also included. Here we have something quite interesting. It's like a big handle and at first I didn't understand what it's for, but then I realized it's actually for the bed or the build platform. There's a couple little holes here, notches that line up here. And instead of putting the bed down on a flat table, you can just put it down on this and carry it around, which is kind of cool. So yeah, this also came with the printer and there's a lot more files on there that I'm not sure exactly what they are, but I just printed a few here just to kind of see what is in there. But yeah, a lot of useful things. So we printed a few PLA prints. Let's check those out first. So here we have a print that's called Squirtle. It's like a turtle and a squirrel, I guess. And yeah, this thing printed out beautifully. Look at it. And this didn't take long at all. And the layers went down absolutely perfect. So yeah. Very, very nice 
what this printer can do at high speeds. Excellent print. There, here we have an octopus. Lots of details as we have all these tentacles and they all stuck to the bed, no problem at all. And then it popped right off. So yeah, the build plate has been doing an excellent job. Got a little support here. So I just printed everything on the standard profile that they included, which is very quick. And this is the results we get. And again, very incredible and looks great and by the way all the prints are 0.2 layer height and to be honest just incredible how well it does with PLA so yeah and this thing didn't take more than like an hour to print so here we have a print that's called a gear and I like to print these as you can see the accuracy of the printer and this is a functional print so all these pieces print separately and it's a gear that should spin so if I hold the middle we should be able to spin it up and <laughs> there it goes so there was something there to break through and now it's perfect. And this is extremely good tolerances, guys. As in like they are a little loose, but that just shows that the printer is very good at tight tolerances because it's supposed to be this loose. Some printers get away with this by being a little tighter and it still works, but it's a little rough. But this thing is literally what it's supposed to be and it's super smooth. Nothing weird going on here and just perfect, honestly. And we can kind of see the layers here on the ground. There is a little bit of vibrations, but very minor. Overall, a great print. Yeah, you can count on the P1P to give you perfect accuracy. So we have a few larger prints we printed in PLA, like this Spider-Man statue bust thing. We do have supports, and they're already loose. Honestly, just by moving around, they broke loose. So yeah, the support system comes off super easy on the bamboo slicer. And you guys can see, this thing looks quite incredible. Yeah, very nice adhesion. We can see all the details greatly. Very smooth all around. So yeah, quite incredible how quick it can print and also put the layers down. Again, you know, keep repeating myself, but very impressive. We do have some ringing here on the bottom. Not terrible, but it is there. There is a little bit of something here. I don't know if it had to do something with the supports or overhangs or what, but yeah, probably the supports. But other than that, it's pretty much perfect print. The other one is here, and this one's quite large and also has lots of supports, which this one broke loose. And we also got a pretty large one here up front. Let's see how easy. Look at that. Super easy to remove the supports, but yeah, this is also a bust statue of some soldier guy from back in the day, or a warrior, I guess, or whatever this would be, Roman times probably, but yeah, let's start here from the bottom. We had something weird going on here, not too sure. I think this was, okay, so I think the only thing we were stuck to is this piece, and then this was all in the air. I didn't realize that, but not a big deal. So yeah, you guys can see the layers are just beautiful. And by the way, this filament is really bad. It's a pretty trashy filament, and I'm impressed how well this printer did with it. You can kind of see the discoloration, and usually this filament is very gummy, but man, did it turn out super good on this print. I was very, very impressed with this one. So yeah, lots of details, and they're all there. And the layer lines are quite minimal, considering, you know, the layer height and the speed we're printing. It is a little bit rough here on the very top, as you can see the layers, but not bad at all considering for what it is. Again, excellent print here. So let's talk about some ABS printing because this is where I was pretty blown away with this printer also. And looking at this print here, it was printed completely in ABS. Yeah, I was impressed how well it stuck. Nothing peeled from the plate, which was impressive. Yeah, just the details on this thing are incredible and I was not expecting this good of a print from ABS. And this printer not being enclosed, I was thinking we we're going to have a bunch of trouble, but wow, super cool. And this roll of ABS has been sitting around for years. I don't use ABS too much, but man, I was so impressed how it all went down and it just looks great. Lots of detail. Let's see if we can get closer to the face. So yeah, for FDM printing, it's quite incredible how much detail we got and how well everything went down. So yeah, we did preheat at 100 for the bed and printed I think 260 or 270 on the nozzle with pretty quick speeds. Here we have also ABS and these are wheels for an RC car. You guys can see they printed like this face down. So our finish looks like that. There's a support here that needs to come out. Let's see how easy that pops off. Or let me get some cutters here. There we go. Yeah, overall really easy and it looks really good. So yeah, for smaller items like these wheels here, ABS is not an issue at all for this printer. So if you're going to print any kind of functional prints in ABS, so far in my experience, this printer does an excellent job. And to prove that, we have this super impressive print here, which is also printed in ABS. 
and this is an engine and you guys can kind of see the pistons there and this is to scale model made by a person called sunshine and this is a super hard print to print on a normal printer any printers that can print this to scale are extremely good because number one there's not much to stick to and number two there's so much detail here and it's completely functional so yeah we have the flywheel here and if we spin it we can see all the cylinders going up and down and we also have a handle here to spin the whole thing so yeah if you can get this thing to work on your printer you have a good printer that's the bottom line because most printers that I tried this on, they almost all fail. I have to scale this up to like 150% in order for most of them to work. But this one did it at 100%. Now, it wasn't perfect as we lost a leg here on the bottom on this thinner part. But overall, it printed out and is functional, which is impressive. And on top of that, it's an ABS, which is the most impressive part. And so with that said, one thing that I wasn't so impressed about is TPU printing. And it's not the clogging or the direct drive extruder there. I think that part works perfect. It's the software and how it puts the layers down seems like it's not completely good. So I tried to print a few things in TPU and not much came out that was good. So these here are cable ties and this is actually Bamboo Lab branded TPU which is the 95A and you guys can see it's stringy around the holes there stringy around the parts it's still okay print it's just stringy and anything I try to print it just doesn't do well I mean these are still functional which is kind of cool they're cable ties so you can organize your cables very useful and also fun to print especially in TPU not super impressed with the TPU printing I wasn't able to really print much I did get this spaceship here which I normally print in TPU you with spiralized mode on which is just one layer and it's supposed to be very flexible but you guys can see there's a lot of gaps here and I can't understand why and it doesn't seem like it was the extruder it seemed like it was software related and it didn't seem like it had anything to do with the resume print function because that was off and I tried turning it on and off it didn't seem to do anything so I'm not sure what's going on but it seems to be software related because down here where you can see where it did a good job it's literally perfect but you know as we go up yeah so a little issue with tpu but you know that could be just user error so i didn't do much tpu after that as i kind of quit messing with it but yeah speaking spiralized mode we do have this spaceship here and this is the full height that this printer can print which is 256 well actually i think it's a little less maybe it's like 250 there's a little buffer there that they need for the bed to go up and down so in any case it's about 250 and yeah it's a good amount of volume up and this is also in spiralized mode so got a few layers on the bottom and the bottom looks perfect as usual and then it's just one layer all the way around and hopefully you guys can see there the layers are sitting really nice Overall, there's nothing too weird. There's a little bit of vibrations, but they're very slight. Overall, it's a great clean print. Even here around the windows, there's no ghosting. Looks very good. And as we go up, we did very well until the very tip. It melted a bit, but still made the ball and finished. So overall, very good for spiralized printing. And not to forget this guy here. This is an astronaut printed in glow-in-the-dark PLA. So I don't know if I'll be able to show you, but he does glow-in-the-dark there. And this also printed out pretty much perfect, as you guys can see. Great detail and perfect layer adhesion. And even down here, we can see on the boots, that's all what's grabbing. It held on, no issues, and yeah, perfect print. So yeah, this printer is everything it's hyped up to be and extremely impressive of what it delivers. So one thing I haven't mentioned yet is that I have this little box in the back where I'm collecting the purges. And these are basically throwaway purges that goes between the filaments or even the same filament. Every time it starts to print, it purges and then spits it out the back. And I got a box back there that it catches them all so they don't fly around the whole back and make a mess. So yeah, you might want to print out yourself a little box or something to keep in the back to catch all these. If we grab one here, that's like a color transition. You can see it went from blue to yellow there. Or here we have one that's from black to bronze. It does a great job purging and transitions filaments very well between two different colors on its own so you don't have to worry about purging and all that. Now with that said, it is quite cumbersome and somewhat slow to do all that because you do have this really cool cutter here that cuts the filament and it's always a straight cut which is nice for next time use so no more you know having to cut it yourself. Filament's always ready to go. But the amount of time it takes to click on the pad here to unload it and then load the new one and things like that, it does take a little bit and feeding it from the back is you know a bit inconvenient but that's you know the 
form factor of this printer and how it works. Now another thing that's you know maybe a little bit of a negative is how slow it is to start because you know if you're going to do bed leveling and all that it, it doesn't go through all its paces and does whatever it's got to do before it actually starts printing. So I wish that part was a little faster but hey you know if that's what it takes to get a perfect print every time that's a good compromise as it seems to be doing a great job whatever it's doing producing these prints. But you know keep in mind you know starting prints especially if you're also going to use wirelessly sending them if they're big files is going to take a while by the time it downloads them unpacks them and reads them and then starts you know the process so another thing i wish is we had a little better settings here on top which could technically be software updated i think you know if you want all the nice easy access to everything you'd have to get the x1 carbon with the large screen but i wish the preheating was a little better here but if you're gonna do it wirelessly through your computer or even your phone i guess it's not that big of a deal but still when you have to change the filament you do need to preheat it so yeah wish it was a little bit easier to do the things that you do often the app that comes with the bamboo lap is also pretty good but again wish it had a little more functionality from your phone but it's still nice that you can log in and see and stop or even start a print that you already have in the cloud so yeah, overall, this is an excellent printer and there's not much negatives compared to positives for sure. We get a very large build volume for its size, which is 256 by 256 by 256 cube. We get ultra super high speed printing with Core XY configuration and carbon rods. Very cool. The head itself with the hot end and the way it's built is quite incredible. And it's just a masterpiece of a work. Also, not to mention that we can go all the way to 300, the bed to 100C, with the nozzle being stainless steel. So there's very many different materials you can use on this printer. Also on the newer models, we do get a camera here and a light bar. You guys can see that. And I didn't really figure out how to use the time lapses, but it's nice to have the camera as you know, that's quite valuable for the phone app where you can check up on your prints while you're not around. And the P1P here is pretty advanced with all of its calibrations, like the input shaper vibration calibrations and out of bed leveling was no issue whatsoever. Perfect layer every time throughout the whole bed. The only thing this thing is really missing from the X1 Carbon is the LiDAR, which would be pretty awesome to have, but that's something exclusively for the X1. We obviously have Wi-Fi compatibility and the files do transfer a little slow, but we do have Wi-Fi, which is great because it gives us the option to control this printer wirelessly. But most of all, I think this package here of the P1P is a great printer for practically anyone. So if you're just getting started with 3D printing, you can get this thing and still be able to, you know, get it running really quickly as there is almost no assembly or anything figured out. It kind of does everything for you, which is great. But at the same time, it's a very advanced piece of hardware that, you know, even an expert would appreciate. And the attention to build quality on this thing is incredible. So yeah, guys, as you can see, we have entered a new era of high speed printing and Bamboo Lab leads the way at this point and we see new printers coming out from our more legacy brands that are trying to catch up. So if you want the best of what 3D printing has to offer at this point in time, the P1P is a great value. If you can splurge for the X1, you should because you get everything there, including the enclosure, nice large touch screen and the LiDAR to make every layer even more perfect. And also extrusion is calculated with the LiDAR of how much the multiplier should be. So yeah, there's even more advanced features but you know if you're on a budget the p1p here does everything so well and it's quite compelling it's not cheap for sure but for what you get it's a very highly engineered and thought through machine